Brusa undertook training for his period alone in lunar orbit, when he would make observations of the moon and take photographs. He had been impressed by the training given to Apollo 13 Prime Crew CMP Mattingly by geologist Farouk Elbaz and got Elbaz to agree to undertake his training. The two men pored over lunar maps depicting the areas the CSM would pass over. When Shepard and Mitchell were on their geology field trips, Russo would be overhead in an airplane taking photographs of the site and making observations. El Baz had Rusa make observations while flying his T-38 jet at a speed and altitude simulating the speed at which the lunar surface would pass below the CSM. Another issue that had marked Apollo 13 was the last-minute change of crew due to exposure to communicable disease. To prevent another such occurrence, for Apollo 14 NASA instituted what was called the Flight Crew Health Stabilization Program. Beginning 21 days before launch, the crew lived in quarters at the launch site, Florida's Kennedy Space Center, with their contacts limited to their spouses, the backup crew, mission technicians, and others directly involved in training. Those individuals were given physical examinations and immunizations, and crew movements were limited as much as possible at KSC and nearby areas. The launch vehicle stack, with the spacecraft on top, was rolled out from the Vehicle Assembly Building to Pad 39A on November 9, 1970. Antares was named by Mitchell after the star in the constellation Scorpius that the astronauts in the LM would use to orient the craft for its lunar landing. The changes to the Apollo spacecraft between Apollo 13 and 14 were more numerous than with earlier missions, not only because of the problems with Apollo 13, but because of the more extensive lunar activities planned for Apollo 14. The Apollo 13 accident had been caused by the explosive failure of an oxygen tank, after the insulation of the internal wiring had been damaged by heating of the tank contents pre-launch that the oxygen had gotten hot enough to damage the insulation had not been realized, since the protective thermostatic switches had failed because they were, through an error, not designed to handle the voltage applied during ground testing. The explosion damaged the other tank or its tubing, causing its contents to leak away. The changes in response included a redesign of the oxygen tanks, with the thermostats being upgraded to handle the proper voltage. A third tank was also added, placed in bay 1 of the SM, on the side opposite the other two, and was given a valve that could isolate it in an emergency, and allow it to feed the CM's environmental system only. The quantity probe in each tank was upgraded from aluminum to stainless steel. Also in response to the Apollo 13 accident, the electrical wiring in bay 4 was sheathed in stainless steel. The fuel cell oxygen supply valves were redesigned to isolate the Teflon-coated wiring from the oxygen. The spacecraft and mission control monitoring systems were modified to give more immediate and visible warnings of anomalies. The Apollo 13 astronauts had suffered shortages of water and of power after the accident. Accordingly, an emergency supply of 5 US gallons of water was stored in Apollo 14 CM, and an emergency battery, identical to those that powered the LM's descent stage, was placed in the SM. The LM was modified to make the transfer of power from LM to CM easier. Other changes included the installation of anti-slosh baffles in the LM descent stage's propellant tanks. This would prevent the low fuel light from coming on prematurely, as had happened on Apollo 11 and 12. Structural changes were made to accommodate the equipment to be used on the lunar surface, including the modular equipment transporter. The Saturn V used for Apollo 14 was designated SAW 509, and was similar to those used on Apollo 8 through 13. At 6,505,548 pounds, it was the heaviest vehicle yet flown by NASA, 3,814 pounds heavier than the launch vehicle for Apollo 13. A number of changes were made to avoid pogo oscillations, that had caused an early shutdown of the center J2 engine on Apollo 13's S2 second stage. These included a helium gas accumulator installed in the liquid oxygen line of the center engine, a backup cutoff device for that engine, and a simplified two-position propellant utilization valve on each of the five J2 engines. Two additional lunar surface experiments not part of the ALSEP were also flown, the laser ranging retro reflector, to be deployed in the ALSEP's vicinity, and the lunar portable magnetometer, to be used by the astronauts during their second EVA. The PSE had been flown on Apollo 12 and 13, the ASE on Apollo 13, the side on Apollo 12, the CCIG on Apollo 12 and 13, and the LRRR on Apollo 11. The LPM was new, but resembled equipment flown on Apollo 12. The ALSEP components flown on Apollo 13 were destroyed when its LM burned up in Earth's atmosphere. Deployment of the ALSEP, and of the other instruments, each formed one of Apollo 14's mission objectives.
The PSE was a seismometer, similar to one left on the moon by Apollo 12, and was to measure seismic activity in the moon. The Apollo 14 instrument would be calibrated by the impact, after being jettisoned, of the LM's ascent stage, since an object of known mass and velocity would be impacting at a known location on the moon. The Apollo 12 instrument would also be activated by the spent Apollo 14 SIVB booster, which would impact the moon after the mission entered lunar orbit. The two seismometers would, in combination with those left by later Apollo missions, constitute a network of such instruments at different locations on the moon. In the first, one of the crew members would deploy three geophones at distances up to 310 feet from the ALSCP's central station, and on his way back from the furthest, fire thumpers every 15 feet. The second consisted of four mortars, of different properties and set to impact at different distances from the experiment. It was hoped that the waves generated from the impacts would provide data about seismic wave transmission in the moon's regolith. The mortar shells were not to be fired until the astronauts had returned to Earth, and in the event were never fired for fear they would damage other experiments. A similar experiment was successfully deployed, and the mortars launched, on Apollo 16. The LPM was to be carried during the second EVA and used to measure the moon's magnetic field at various points. The side measured ions on the lunar surface, including from the solar wind. It was combined with the CCIG, which was to measure the lunar atmosphere and detect if it varied over time. The CPLEE measured the particle energies of protons and electrons generated by the sun that reached the lunar surface. The LRRR acts as a passive target for laser beams, allowing the measurement of the Earth-Moon distance and how it changes over time. The LRRRs from Apollo 11, 14 and 15 are the only experiments left on the Moon by the Apollo astronauts that are still returning data. Flown for the first time on Apollo 14 was the Buddy Secondary Life Support System, a set of flexible hoses that would enable Shepard and Mitchell to share cooling water should one of their primary life support system backpacks fail. In such an emergency, the astronaut with the failed equipment would get oxygen from his oxygen purge system backup cylinder, but the BSLSS would ensure he did not have to use oxygen for cooling, extending the life of the ops. The OPSs used on Apollo 14 were modified from those used on previous missions in that the internal heaters were removed as unnecessary. Water bags were also taken to the lunar surface, dubbed Gunja Dins, for insertion in the astronauts' helmets, allowing them sips of water during the AVAs. These had been flown on Apollo 13, but Shepard and Mitchell were the first to use them on the moon. Shepard was the first on the lunar surface to wear a spacesuit with commander's stripes, red stripes on arms, legs, and on the helmet, though one had been worn by Lovell on Apollo 13. These were instituted because of the difficulty in telling one spacesuited astronaut from the other in photographs. The modular equipment transporter was a two-wheeled handcart, used only on Apollo 14, intended to allow the astronauts to take tools and equipment with them, and store lunar samples, without needing to carry them. On later Apollo program missions, the self-propelled lunar roving vehicle was flown instead. The MET, when deployed for use on the lunar surface, was about 86 inches long, 39 inches wide and 32 inches high. 